everybody and welcome to Little Workroom Crafts episode 19. <laughs> okay my name is Davina and I live in the southeast coast of the UK. It's a lot cooler at the moment which is very nice because I do not do the heat. <laughs> no way but um, yeah okay what I will say is I'm ever so sorry that I didn't record yesterday like my normal Wednesday um because as you could hear i'm still suffering with the hay fever and it's irritated my asthma badly so i've got a phone up to i've been told i've got a phone up tomorrow and um I have an appointment a phone appointment with my asthma nurse to get some different inhalers because it's just irritated me really badly but um it's good that we've got cleaner air <laughs> so we need cleaner air okay so there is a lot to talk about today a lot to talk about um right where do i start where have, what have we got we've got um some finished um items mainly in quilting um and sewing i'm going to show you um how i'm getting on with my cross stitch i've got a bit of dressmaking um, I'm going to show you the progress I'm doing on my scrappy cardigan. I am loving that at the moment. I'm just seem to be working on that more than anything. It's just so much fun. And uh, yes, I have got this section now that I have called Naughty and Nice Post. <laughs> you can understand where the naughty is. That's me. And you can, uh, obviously, the nice is from you, you lovely crafters. Absolutely amazing 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 friends um, but i will say ellie craft house magic the naughty is obviously catching from you that's all i'm gonna say it's catching from you <laughs> so you and your confessions is me and my naughties <laughs> but um yeah and uh, so i've got a lot to talk about there is a couple of things as well where i'm, I'm gonna try and explain what i'm gonna do and hopefully it will work but i reckon you're all gonna go <gasps> like this so, but we'll see how it goes and also i have actually recorded the um i've done a little video of uh the sunbonnet sue quilt that i was talking about earlier on so i will mention i will show the video and i will talk more about where i got the idea from and everything else so then let's pop on and start right away because there's lots to talk about today okay then so I have just finished the four um, tutorials on starting from scratch of patchwork and quilting and I have just received the most beautiful message from a lovely lady called Sharon so thank you ever so much Sharon I'm here if you need any more help at all just message me I do not mind and um, it has just been so much fun absolutely so much fun so I'll have a bit of a break from that now and then perhaps um you know in the future i'll do another stage where we'll do like half square triangles and cutting those and putting them together and, and so on so um yeah you know this isn't just you know start and stop sorry this is actually going to carry on but what we did is we just cut the squares and uh, put them together with the piecing and um machine quilted and you know and did the binding so this is the piece that I actually made while I was doing it and this is sitting now on my um, dining room table underneath my glass bowl that I've got down there and uh, it was I know it's a little extra but I, I believe that you know even when you're doing tutorials it's nice to make something that is actually practical for everybody to use so you know well done to everybody that is actually having a go right what shall i do now oh yes and also there was another tutorial that i popped in as i do uh for my rug yes <laughs> it's um rope and it well, was it's basically a cotton uh, washing line and scraps of strips of fabric and um that's basically it i'm going to pop a picture of it in here right then it is so much fun to make and i'm absolutely loving every minute of it being in my room up here and <laughs> it's nice and bright and colorful and uh, yeah it's it's good fun good fun so give it a go just give it a go it's, it's you know use up bits and bobs why not okay then no right then let's go into the dressmaking as you can see i have made a top 
now I'm loving this top I haven't worn it yet and I, I've just made it and I haven't even given it all you know I normally make things because of the you have to mark bits and bobs and then I give them a wash before I wear them and um, it's actually made in a hemp fabric so yeah it's going to crease but it's going to be so cool to wear now the pattern what have I done them on I'm surrounded by so much stuff <laughs> Now the pattern is Simplicity um, SS78. Now on here as you see it's got the dress like that with the tie. I didn't, I didn't actually buy it for the tie. I didn't like that. And then they've got this, um, uh, this top. But um, I only had a metre of fabric. So all I did was just did, made the top but didn't put any sleeves in. This is basically what this is here. Um, so it's very very easy to make um, it actually really was and I loved the way they did the neck it was all faced inside which I do like a faced I prefer face a facing neck than I do a bound neck and um, the only thing I did didn't do is because this hemp is quite stiff even though I pre-wash everything it's still quite stiff um, which is, is expected for hemp and um, it's it did require um, interfacing, but because of the stiffness, I didn't bother putting it in. I'm glad I didn't because I would have sat down and it would have stood up. <laughs> I got to think. So, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have been very practical. But um, I love the shape of it. It's just a basic. And why I liked it, because of the, um, the idea of not putting any sleeves in. Because, yet again, in the winter, that's going to be ideal with a long sleeve T-shirt. So, um it's basically an all-rounder really um yeah there's not much more i can say about it just it's an easy pattern so yet again it's eight eight seven eight the simplicity and very easy and uh yeah i'm really pleased with it really really pleased with the way it's turned out and what i'm wearing today ooh, ooh, sorry <laughs> is another simplicity pattern i've made a few of these i absolutely love them it's just i wish i'd have, this was one of the first ones i made and it, don't worry this is a patchwork piece this is a piece of fabric that's already done i i ain't quite that crazy <laughs> um and it's got a blue if i lift it up a bit it's got a blue strip around the bottom i just wish i'd have put pockets um on it but you know i did it at the time i've, I've had this a couple of years now and this pattern is simplicity i don't know if they still do um but they did the dotty angel collection oh my gosh i loved the dotty angel collection and i managed to get every single one of them except for one and it is the um the quilted jacket and i wish i wish i'd have gotten that i'd have got that and i think that one actually has been discontinued but i will have to look into that more but this is it this is um simplicity uh, 1080 so it's a dotty angel collection and so this is the dress here I just I hadn't put the pockets on and I really wish I had so comfortable it's got a little tie at the back to pull you in and um, yeah I oh yes look they actually do have it here as well as a tunic oh I might give that a go so I've done the dress a few times but I haven't made the tunic but I think this yet again is a bound neck and it's bound all around here. But I could quite easily, I think what I would do actually is heighten this a little bit and then put a facing in because this is quite low. So, um, yeah, anyway, I could have a play around. But as I say, I've made a few. So, so comfortable to wear. So that's um, Simplicity 1080. So, but definitely have a look at the Dotty Angel collections if they're still out there. They are really, really good okay then so that's the uh dress making so let's go into the knitting oh, excuse me because my bags fell down <laughs> okay so my cardigan oh my gosh i'm loving every minute of this as you all know i'm knitting the long line cardigan from hooky hockey telly nice long one and i'm actually doing it like my scraps using up my scraps like my scrappy ones so as you know i've done the um Oh, I've done a top, I've done two other cardigans. I've been doing the scrappy scrappy ones for a few years now. But this is just coming along so nicely. As you all know, I was very worried at the beginning. 
but of because of the construction but it is working really well and i've actually started to do i've gone in at the uh the waist and now i'm starting to go out again but um yeah um loving the the way the colors the, the scraps are just going together so well it's unbelievable it really really is but i am so so low i just can't put it down and i might i know people are going to actually go really because normally you know knitters will go oh, i've got to do the sleeves sleeves are my favorite part i love knitting sleeves um because especially when i'm doing a cardigan because it's the round and round and round and round, and round to me it's quicker you know i'm not a pearl person really you know um and ever since finding you know knitting from top down or bottom up on a jumper it, it to me is amazing so um knitting a sleeve <laughs> what could i say what more could i say is it's um you know it, it's just brilliant i can't wait to get to the sleeves <laughs> yep i know i'm a bit weird but there we go righty ho right then so that's all the knitting really i've been concentrating on at the moment right then so talking about knitting and yarns and stuff like that now these lovely lovely um people let's get my piece of paper on instagram was it last no, last week, week before i think it was um they um a lovely 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 couple um in the uk brought online that they a little video of their sheep being taken off to be sheared and then being brought back again all nice and you know and, uh, <laughs> all sheared it must feel lovely for them it really must and um they um they put on later on in the evening if anybody would like um one of the fleeces um just um mess leave a message below and they would post it off so uh, and i thought well you know i've really got into my spinning on my spindle and uh, you know i'm enjoying it so much so i thought well, yeah i'm going to give this a go i've never actually done a fleece from the beginning right to the end before and um so i and, and luckily nobody else had actually and uh, you know asked for one of these um fleeces so a few days later there was a knock on my door and uh, one of the couriers had, had left on my doorstep this fleece i got so so excited it's from their sheep called oreo and it's really weird because the more i hear the story and the backing of of, of oreo it, it was meant to be my fleece it really was oreo is my favorite biscuit i will put that in now absolutely love oreos <laughs> and um i said to glenn i said it is just meant to be it really really is meant to be so um and then um mrs mrs rabbit i will say put uh, a little story on because i did have actually uploaded um, a video of where i've started right from scratch to preparing the fleece i've just got to card it now and then i've got to uh, obviously then i'll start spinning but it was too hot for me to go out and with this uh, to start carding in the week and now it's gone cooler i'm still not very good so hopefully this will clear up soon so I could, i'm just itching to get out and start carding on on oreo's fleece but i have actually put a video of up on me you know washing it preparing it and everything so um i've i did research a lot of research and it's just come up beautiful now i will say that the lovely uh, lady and gentleman that sent me this is mr and mrs rabbit and they have actually got their own business and it's for hand dyed yarns so i will say please go over and have a look mrs rabbit and it's hand dyed they have they have some beautiful hand dyed yarns and um yeah i i'm hoping in the future to be able to get one of their skeins and uh, and um yeah so, and support their business because they are lovely i also got in the parcel a um beautiful postcard and it, it's got here d is for davina written on the back and it's um miss oreo she's a now i try to actually pronounce this before recent week recent sheep i'll have to look on um 
I know we googled it and she's a little sheep um little breed um from oh I think from Germany which is really weird because I lived in Germany my daughter was born in Germany you know the connection behind this is, is just unbelievable and then um um mrs rabbit when she met, left a message actually on the, the the bottom of the video saying that when they got her uh, oreo a couple of uh uh years ago she actually had was was pregnant and she had her baby um the day before my more my birthday day and i thought this is just such you know everything is just fitting <laughs> <laughs> it's just so weird but i'll have to look on them katie green's poster that i've got to see what it says on there but i do apologize i what i'll do is i'll actually put the name of uh, of her breed at the bottom of the screen here so you can read it and there's a lovely lovely message on the back and i am going to actually get let's get out of say I've, I've got to the stage where i've got it all washed and the smell oh my word when i actually unwrapped that parcel and i was out on um on the 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 patio set and the smell was divine absolutely beautiful of the, all the lanolin and oh just amazing but the colors look at the colors in her fleece I can't wait to get out and get this card, start getting this carded. I really, really can't. <laughs> still, after all the washing I did, there's still bits I'm finding in it. But I suppose that's, there we go. And, um, yeah, it is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. Absolutely love it. And I can't wait to um, get it all carded and then i can start spinning but i did actually out of this one fleece that i actually managed to get a pile of dark a pile of medium and a pile of light um of tones and as, if you watch the video you'll actually see the light medium and dark and they are all in here all, all been um, they're still separated but as i say thank you so much mr and mrs rabbit and a special thank you to oreo um and give her a big hug for me uh i'd love love to, to meet her um but you know obviously with things the way they are at the moment it's never you know won't happen but um yeah thank you so much and i i, I just I can't, I can't find anything else really to say because i will be um video and my you know progress as i go along and um yeah thank you <laughs> so i've got that in the post then so we'll go on to cross stitch now shall we so let's move flow back there you go Flo and let's pull in my stand now as you all know i am making this one which is hands-on design fresh eggs farms uh, farm and it's a collaboration between um stitching with the housewives and obviously um kathy uh this was actually a, a 2018 uh, release I won't go much more into that because you see it all the time. But I've got to the truck. I'm so excited. Let's bring it over. There you go. Look at that. So I've got the truck started and there's a chicken. I <laughs> love it. So I've done all this. I've done my tree. I've done this and I've done the truck. And then I've got to do um, another, uh, start the garland. After I've done the truck, I'll start the garland, which let's put this down there we go okay so i've got to do the flowers and the color in the truck and i've done all this and then i'm going to start that because what i normally do is this pattern comes in two shit on two sheets so i always look at the biggest one do that one first so once i've actually done all this you see i've only got this little bit to do on the on the second sheet so you're not i find if i get the biggest one done first you know you, you're, you're literally on your way aren't you you know on, on the finishing line basically so um yeah i'm so enjoying this really really enjoying this <laughs> and it's really coming along lovely i am i'm really really loving it okay then so that's all the cross stitch i've been doing at the moment um say all the cross stitch it is quite a big piece and as you see i took off just a fat quarter of fabric and that is what i actually cover 
my cross stitch with while I'm not working on it so it protects it from dust and dirt and so on so um yeah and I am hoping because as you know I am doing the other hands-on designs which is the months of the year I am hoping because I've done four at the moment I've, I've done April I'm on a start in May so I'm hoping to actually have that one um up here so it's a little one up that I can do up here and obviously this one's always downstairs so then I've got the two set up at the same time okay then right so before I get on to all the naughty and nices I will say <laughs> I'm just going to stop this video and I'll be back in a moment and I'll explain why right then okay <laughs> I've come up with this idea. I might try it, I might not. So we'll see in a fortnight's time. As you probably recognise, this is the floozy cardigan. Now, um, Angie and I both made one of these to go to um, Edinburgh. I got mine as Christmas present, the yarn and uh, the pattern from Glen. So I started it on Christmas Day and then got it all finished and everything ready by March to go up to Edinburgh. And also I have, which I did buy the pattern from Edinburgh, is the Cattigan. Okay. Right, so when I made these, <laughs> I was uh, a bit bigger than what I am now. And I have actually lost uh, a bit of weight. So they hang on me, absolutely hang on me. So I thought rather than them sitting in the you know i have a special container just for my hand knits rather than them sitting in there doing nothing because they're not getting worn what can i do with them so i thought obviously as you know this is um, knitted in a um piece one piece this was actually knitted in the round this is the very very first um steaking i did and i did actually follow i will pop this in i did actually follow an um, elliot craft house magic's tutorial how to do that steaking it was very very good scary to cut but i i did enjoy doing it and i definitely will be doing more and rather than i'm just sitting there as i say doing nothing i have thought what i might do is <laughs> we will see if this works is because look if you can see that is the waist on my on my dummy so it is quite obviously i know this is a stretch so i will treat it as a jersey basically fabric is what i thought i would do so i'll turn it inside out and i'm thinking of pinning there and there to take it in as i say i'm going to treat it like a, a t -shirt, a long sleeve t-shirt see what the sleeves are like and see if they need taking in anything here and then what i will do luckily this piece of um colour work actually doesn't go over my um my armhole which is very lucky so what i will do is i will tack that up either side equally stitch it and then get my overlocker on it so i'm going to cut it away and overlock the edges now um i'm going to see if it's going to work hopefully it will because then i'll be able to wear them and this one is going to be done the same way my catigan um because as i say i can't wear them so you know i don't think i've actually ever bought this one on to be honest since i've made it you know because i, I made it to the size that i wanted and then by the time that the the autumn winter came which was ready for enough to wear it because i knitted this through the summer it was too big so i'll keep you informed i'm hoping to have them done <laughs> for the next time i record and uh wish me luck that's all i can say um i know that we take in garments so why can't we take in knitted garments that's what i'm thinking um so yeah bear with me on that one and i'll see what i can you know i'll let you know how i get on i'll try it first obviously on one of them and see if it works and um what i'll probably will do actually thinking about it just a minute ago is that i because i've got quite a lot to take in i'll put a practice within the seam uh, you know i know i'm going to give myself a seam at the bottom you know but it doesn't it doesn't bother me you know it really doesn't bother me as long as i can actually get to wear what i've made and i do love these colors we did choose because i remember being at angie's in her living room we both chose these colors 
um, together. And yeah, you know, the bottom doesn't seem too bad. It's here. It's just, anyway, I am going to have a play. I'm so I'm going to treat it like a, a long sleeve t-shirt as a jersey fabric. So I'll get my overall locker on it. And yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> Righty ho, okay, now we'll get back to talking about the quilt. Now this morning I got um, my sunbonnet Sue quilt out and it's actually um, uh, through the year, all through the year is what it's called. Now I did actually originally get the actual pattern for this from a book that I brought a long, long, long time ago from a little quilt show called Chilford, which unfortunately is not, that, not there any longer. We all miss Chilford, I think, in this area. Anyway, um, as soon as I saw this book, I thought I've got to do it. So there is going to be, I have rec already recorded a video of me explaining all round the quilt. Um, on, I've just popped on top of the bed because it doesn't go on the bed. You'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to pop it in here and then I will talk more about the book and everything in a moment. Right, hello. So this is my through the seasons quilt this is the quilt that took me two years to make by hand and it's from a book which i'll show you in a moment and it actually is the um quilt that i wrote a diary with i've got two rosettes from little quilt shows i don't go into any big ones and i am um, i got a second and a third which I'm so pleased with uh, for her. And this is the one I used to take around and um, and talk about in different quilt groups all around Essex and Suffolk um, here in the east, um, the, uh, the east coast of the UK. Right then, let's go up here first. As you can see, it's 12 blocks and every one represents a day, uh, a month of the year. So obviously this is January. Then you've got February, Valentine. Now the March one, I actually did change a bit because my grandparent, my grand granddad that I never met, he came over to the UK from Ireland. That's where we get our colour hair from. <laughs> and uh, so I give her a pint of Guinness to represent my granddad. Um, so yeah, we, you know, I have got hot Irish heritage. I'd love to go there one day. I will one day, I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> Then we've got the April showers, Maypole, and there is June, where it's nice and breezy. And um, let me get, see if I can get over here so I can show you what I did on June. Is I made a little separate quilt. It's all separate, all bound and everything. And that's like a, to represent a little. It's a little bit of tea towel I used. <laughs> So this has been hung up in the shop for ages at some time. They keep asking for it to go back, <laughs> even though they can't get the book. But all the little bonnets, if you look at this one, look, they're, it's all pleated. Her little sleeve, it's a little separate sleeve. Right then, so that was June. July is obviously the beach. There we go. August, let's see if I can move that little net, because that goes like that. With the butterflies and then september is when we go back to school over here so to source a lot of these bits and bobs which is very handy if anyone do a quilt like this in the future go to um uh, dollhouse shops because i even managed to get look it says on there Ooh, let's focus let's see if i can get that to focus there we go classic haberdashery latest designs of cotton fabric and inside is all little designs of fabric so i actually got that from a uh, doll's house shop so that's august no september sorry then october obviously is halloween there she see look, all her dress all 3d and this sunbonnet sue has got a her bonnet is the witch's hat the ghost when this is actually shown at night i outlined this with um blanket stitch with a dmc glow in the dark thread so the, the little ghost glow in the dark all these which are absolutely amazing i thought 
is large rickrack and you cut out one of the V's and then fold it in and make leaves and I used that as well up on the March one. This one is November, our Guy Fawkes. So I was really pleased with the fabrics I used for the, um, the bonfire and I bought beads so that glitter on the ends of the thread and this is a pearl a hand dyed um thread i used there and then there he is is santa <laughs> and the little reef which i made let's see if i can fold that over there we go with the parcels underneath and this fabric is um to replicate the, the um wallpaper is all little miniature flying geese I had so much fun sourcing all the bits and bobs for this. Okay then, so what I did is I just got a normal, um, what you call uh, an exercise book like we used to use at school and got some um, oh, leaflets and that that companies and shops used to send out to little catalogues and that and um, I cut them all out and like, de not decoupage, but like a... I just glued them on and then got one of these plastic covers uh, to make all quilting related and yeah it's um, all written in there we go right through it was the national quilt show I went to that year it um, sand down so I must have got some fabrics for it then but you know it's that's my diary that I did and if you notice is hand quilted and this pattern here I actually did draw myself and make all my own template I can get her in she's never this is the first time she's actually ever been on a bed she's always hung on a wall at somewhere or another but I am so proud actually of the work that I put into this quilt and this is definitely going to be one that's passed on to my Rebecca and also I did that's my back in and on the okay so that's the quilt I love that quilt and it is a shame that she is folded up and put away but you can understand why she's too big for a wall and um, she's just too delicate with all the little bits and bobs for um, for a bed really but there was a clip quick glimpse of the book and this is it it's Sunbonnet Sue all through the year and it's oh, wow I don't have an author Sue Linker of course and it's by Sue Linker. Now, I don't know if this is current anymore. It is being published. I haven't a clue. As I say, I've got this a long, long time ago. You get all the pullouts. I'll give you a quick cut. <laughs> for all the months. And at the beginning, as I showed you in my video, there is, uh, there is a section of how you do all the hats, because all the bonnets are 3D, how you make the leaves out of the rickrack and um yeah in and there also is a gallery and there is a lovely gallery there's loads in there of the quilts that will give you inspiration it was two years in the making and i thoroughly enjoyed every single stitch i put into her and also i wrote a diary and i've never ever done this before i wrote a diary just for this quilt and i've never done it since and it's every stitch that's been put into her is in here. And where I sourced the uh, little bits from, because I explained in the video. And yeah, she really, really is um, something that I'm proud of. And I will definitely be passing her over to Rebecca and uh, telling her that she's got to look after her. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's amazing the um the fun i had of sourcing all the different fabrics the different ideas the 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 beading and you name it it's in there basically it's in there and that is the quilt as i say that was um i used to take around all around essex and suffolk and do talks about at different quilt groups um basically because of the diary i attached to it not a lot of quilters had thought of doing this and I think if you're going to do a big quilt like that, then, you know, do it. Absolutely, you know, write it down on paper what you've done. I'm going to have, have, tell you a quick story because I don't really want this video to be too long because it's going to be long enough as it is. 
is about three, three, four years ago when I was at work and I'd already gone part time because of my health. And luckily this lady had come in um, just out of the blue. She was from America and she was, you know, had moved over here and she had these quilt tops. Right. The, 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 honestly, I have never experienced anything like this when it comes into quilting in my life. I, I was lucky enough to go to the the um, history of quilts at the um, uh, V&A, you know, Victoria and Albert Museum. And that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But this was so special she had these two quilt tops and they were from her great 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 grandma um that had been found in an attic when a relation had passed and these were civil war quilts tops that hadn't been finished and when she actually got them out of the bag and i was touching these quilts you know these quilt tops the first thing i did was turn them over because obviously they were all pieced by hand and um, to see if it was a quarter of an inch seam <laughs> and if they were all pressed over to one side like we do today and they were they were all the seams were pressed over to one side and it was exactly a quarter of an inch and her tiny the, the, the great great grandma the tiny little stitches that have been hand done. And these were big quilts, like double bed quilts. They weren't small. And what the lady wanted to do was actually finish them off. She wanted to respect, you know, give respect and finish off these quilt tops. Luckily, about two months before that she come in, I had gone and ordered um, with one of my reps, Simon. Hello, Simon. Um, a whole unit full of reproduction civil war fabrics that that was the thing at the time you know because quilting fabrics have fashion just like anything else does so we went over and there was a couple of the fabrics that was actually matched the the originals it was oh i tell you what i i got so excited and um my boss and, and my colleague debbie they just left me to it because they could see i didn't know whether, whether to laugh cry uh, every emotion was coming out at once because this was what i'd been dreaming of you know to actually hold a quilt from that era it was just i'll never ever forget it never forget it and we managed to, because what she wanted to do is wanted to put a couple of borders around the outside and then we'd measure up what we the um, size of the borders and then get the wadding and then get the backing and then uh, she was going to finish off these quilt tops. And as I say, we, we managed to match a couple that were identical um, so we could put them on and I worked out all the maths for her. We, we did it all, you know, got the wadding and everything and all the fabric that was needed. And then... Um, and I went, you know, thank you so much for bringing these quilt tops in. It was just beautiful to be able to have the privilege, and it was a privilege, to hold these quilt tops. Anyway, um, I, uh, I, you know, the, the, the lady, I, you know, I, I served her and then she went off and that was that kind of thing, I thought. And then obviously because of the size of them, and when you know, you quilters, that when they're actually a quilt is quilted, a big quilt, it, they get quite heavy. So I uh, I went to work one day, say a few months later, and um, it might have even been longer than that actually, because, you know, she was going to hand quilt them and that. That was another thing, you know, we were going to, um, I was explaining to her how the best way to quilt them and, and everything. So I sold her all the hand quilting equipment and everything as well. So anyway, we um, a little while later, um, there was a letter actually coming to work addressed to me and inside was photographs of the two finished quilts. Now, I do have them here and uh, a beautiful letter of me thanking her, you know, thanking me for all my hard work. But I, if anything, if I ever met the lady again, I would thank her. Well, I did thank her, you know, for actually all the shops in this area that, and she chose... It, the one I worked in was just amazing, absolutely amazing. So when it comes to what we do today, it is literally followed on from, you know, years and years and years ago, absolutely years ago. And I'll never, say, I'll never, ever forget that. Never. 
so if you do ever watch <laughs> thank you <laughs> right then so let's go on to the naughty and nice post shall we so my lovely friend caroline uh, that I met at um, Barbara's Day Out and she is an amazing crocheter. She do actually um, teach us crochet, uh, well, obviously when we're allowed, uh, you know, and everything's being lifted, but she obviously she can't do it now. But she left me a beautiful message saying that she would like to get me um, a nice uh, a present, um, a gift, I will say, um, obviously because, you know, she'd missed my birthday and to thank me for all my hard work of doing all the podcasts and all that, you know, while we're all on shut um, lockdown and stuff. And, you know, I'm doing this because I, I love doing it, but it, it was just a lovely, lovely um, surprise and, and, you know, gesture on her part because she's a lovely lady as Caroline. So anyway, um, a few days later, I got an email from my other lovely friend that I've known for quite a few um, years now is Nancy. I've mentioned her loads of times before from um, Nancy, which is Lena Patchwork. And um, Lena, um, Lena Patchwork is a company. They've actually started doing um, gift tokens on their website and um, after I'd actually used the gift token that lovely Caroline had sent over to me um, and done my order, um, Nancy got in contact with me and said I was like the guinea pig and I was the first customer. So, but it's so easy to use, I will say, it's so easy to use. So, this is um, Lena Patchwork. Right, so it's Lena Patchwork. She's English paper piecing shop online. Her name is Lat Nancy. She also has a phone number on the back of her card here, but her her stuff comes really quickly. I ordered it in the evening. I got an email saying it was going to be leaving the next day, and I got it yesterday. What I will say though is she obviously, with all what's going on at the moment in the world, she is actually only posting, I think, a couple of times a week rather than what she would be doing every day but what i say is it's absolutely brilliant and what i ordered is so i'm going to uh, show caroline because she she doesn't know what i've got um i fell in love with this right which is uh one of actual nancy's um own designs and i've never actually seen english paper piece and done like this so let me get um out of the plastic so you don't get no glare now in this pack i all it comes with the pattern and all the papers to do what is needed but it's um, her own design and it's called the whirly gig cushion now as soon as i actually saw it on her website i thought i love it as a cushion i really do but i'm gonna make a quilt <laughs> And I'm going to do the blocks. Now, I've worked all out the mass because I'm going to do one where it's actually hanging right over the bed. It's going to be a, like a king size quilt. And I think I worked out yesterday that I need, was it 60 odd blocks? But anyway, you know what I mean? And I just love the way that you wouldn't believe that was English paper piecing with the, the, the rotation. And that's going to be a stash buster. So I'm going to have background fabrics, all different tone, um, cream tone on tones. And then the whirly gig in the middle here, they're all going to be different. Um, you know, I'm going to have like one block and one and then another block is going to be all different colours and then a different colours. But I'm going to put sashing around the outside and I'm thinking my sashing is going to be like a, um, uh, like a torpy colour. Because I've got the cream and then I'll have the top or even a green would be nice, actually. And then I'll have all the colours with the whirly gig. And um, I, I contacted uh, Nancy last night saying, obviously, because one pack of, uh, which is what you get in the kit, is not going to be enough. Uh, you know, if I've got to do 60 odd blocks, that literally is going to, <laughs> not going to last <laughs> for 60 odd blocks, is it? I think it was 69 I've got to do and anyway i've got an email back just about as i was starting to record this so i haven't actually replied to her yet and yep we we um, we're definitely going to be doing um she's going to be sending me some of the block uh some more of the, the papers uh in the packs and also i got so i got this from caroline and also i got some more aura fill because I have got so addicted to this Aurafil <laughs> thread. 
it is absolutely believable, unbelievable and at the mo at the moment i don't know if she has it all the time but she has um you buy three and you get them as a um a discount price so which is really cheap for for oil fill so i thought well i'll get the blue the green and the the, the pink and I, as you know i've already got the uh, cream and the fawns and the dark brown and um you know and what i'll do is i will start collecting the orifil colors because i think this is a lovely thread for the english paper piecing so i'll pop them over there but what i'm going to say is also before i pop on um you always get a little free gift from nancy within your um um uh, you know your little parcel whatever you've ordered she always give you some little free papers now so thank you ever so much nancy for the quick delivery and everything else thank you thank you caroline um you are a, an amazing friend and i can't wait until we can all meet up again at, at, at barbara's day out it's you know it's been all too long that we haven't seen each other really and uh, so thank you and the you know you have literally triggered my brain into a making a beautiful quilt hopefully it will turn i'm going to hand quilt it because obviously it's english paper piece and um, i do like to keep hand with hand if i can and um yeah i'll keep the progress uh, on this channel um obviously you will, will know that a few weeks ago i started one out of that book well my heart just weren't in that one i don't know why but as soon as i saw this it's something different i think and um yeah it's it's just going to be a brilliant stash buster it really really is i'm going to put some borders around the outside really i've got so many ideas going on in my head for this quilt it's unbelievable and i haven't been like this for a quilt towards a quilt for a while and with it being hand pieced as well yeah so thank you caroline i got the whirly gig pattern and the papers and the threads and i'm going to get some more papers and i'm going to start a quilt and i know you have been doing the english paper piece in the hexagons and your work is absolutely beautiful the fabrics are lovely that you are using and uh so yeah keep it uh, you know keep up with the hexagons yourself and just thank you thank you so much okay so what else have i been doing right yes yeah, so there were the two not nice now here comes the noughties so as i say ellie your fault this one <laughs> okay so from the um where is it from oh barn yarns in they're up north in yorkshire area i haven't actually got a um i didn't get anything with this i don't think any information because i normally keep them um i have no i noticed on um a youtube floss tube channel oh what's it called oh did it i love it it's country stitches i think i watch it every friday and uh they um was saying about a square hoop and i thought wow we don't have square hoops over here i'm going to see if i can find one well the only place i could actually find one was at barn yarns and it i will say it wasn't cheap it wasn't cheap but this is going to be absolutely perfect for my little months of the year because you know i edged the ada uh with a piece of calico and then that will fit in there just perfect and it's so lightweight and there's a little i don't know if you can see it see a little ridge oh there it is look see a little ridge so for the holding of it while you're stitching obviously i'm left-handed so i'll do it this way but you do it that way but yeah so um yeah and um i'll put it on on a stand and then I, so I have all that set up up here and that's going to be my little stitching area up here so i got that and then also another floss tube is called barbara's daughter now she is really good she hasn't long started actually um her youtube and she was using because to keep all your um bobbins or your threads all together um rather than having containers in your uh, project bag i was trying to find the big metal rings where over here all i could find was ones that were came with more uh, plastic cards where i don't need any plastic cards you know the bobbins for to bobbinet them up so anyway she was using uh these little thing little gadgets that i brought now um and luckily somebody asked her where they where she got them from and look at the little rings and you can undo them and plonk your 
your threads on and then they'll go in the project now i will say i got my she got hers from amazon and i actually got mine from um ebay but what i did is i actually bought into ebay a pack of 10 colored nylon coated stainless steel wire key rings and mine are six inches in length now i googled that and these cost me there was 10 of them in the packet as i've just read and obviously that one is being used at the moment and um they were two pounds something with postage free they were from the uk i don't say i i don't normally use amazon so i don't i'm assuming you could get them on the uk from um uk um uh, from amazon to the uk as well now they did have ones that were just all silver and uh, they were a little bit cheaper and i thought you've got to have color in your life and as you can see in my room i love my color so <laughs> more color the happy i am so yeah all you do is you plunk the um the cards on and pop that up like that pop that in just like we used to have our necklaces in the um, 80s basically and then you have a little ring they're brilliant absolutely brilliant and um i would definitely suggest if you're a big cross stitcher to get them and um i'm gonna ha um, have one because as i say my months of the year i've got my hoop now and i've already got my project bag and everything all set up and i've got the the threads that i use for that in a plastic box so now i'm going to pop them on one of these this one is to go with the because uh, that's all the threads i need for the what that big one i'm working on at the moment and um so that goes in my little uh, rope bowl that i made and the, everything is neat and tidy and all together and that's the way i like my my crafting so I just grab my bits and go. Right, so that's the hoop. Also, as well, is as you, um, I said a fortnight ago, is that um, I was waiting on a floor stand to come because my one that goes underneath my leg was um, it broke on me. You know, I'd had it since the nineties, in mid nineties as well. It's been all round, travelled all round with me because I got it in Canada. Um, so you know, it's done its turn bless its heart it really has so i thought well, what i'll do is i'll actually get rather than having it tucked underneath my leg because when you have them tucked underneath your leg you seem to be more restricted it's here kind of thing and um so i wanted to get a floor stand so i actually found this lady's this company online called marie's cross stitch i think it is i'll put that down below and um as i said last time it was only up the road i couldn't believe it was up there up the road so I um I contacted them and um I've ord I ordered it and it actually arrived. I did my podcast on the Wednesday and it arrived on the Friday. And then when I actually got it, <laughs> I realised on the box that you can actually buy a, a chart um, holder chart that actually fixes. I'll show you in a moment at the top. So I got back to them and um, they didn't have any in stock, which is I appreciate them being honest with me and um by you know i still um did the order and everything and it should be here they ordered it monday and they reckon it should be with them by yesterday and hopefully it will be by um with me either tomorrow or the beginning of next week and um so that will stand let me get me um that will actually go in here and it screws in here and then i've got a board and then my pattern can sit there which will be brilliant but what i'm going to do is rather than trying to pick it up and show you i'm actually going to take a photograph of my new stand and um and then uh, you know i'll pop it in here because i've got this one set up downstairs and then i'll be getting another one um which has been lovingly um, gifted to me and i'll have that one set up here and then um which then because obviously working on black ada is can be straining more for your eyes where obviously on the other ones i'm working on another uh, on a lighter color ada so up here in the bright i'll be nice and, and good also quickly because this is going to be so long i'm ever so sorry i'm actually going to be thinking of um because i've got of course, a few months ago now i saw my podcast i got those big pieces of white ada at the charity shop well i am not a i don't like working on white ada i don't seem to be a lot of people do um so what i'm going to try and do i've been looking into it as you know research as i always do of tea and coffee dyeing 
some of that ada myself so if it works i will be taking you along with the, with me as i always do and uh, yeah i'm going to give it a go i'm going to try and coffee it's called tea and coffee dye um ada i've never dyed ada before uh, at all i've never given it a go so yeah because i want a bit deeper colors so yeah i'm going to bring you along with that one definitely okay then so i think that oh one more thing as i've said on my cardigan um the sleeves i can't wait to get onto the sleeves and i went through my needle stash and worked out that i didn't have because i like to use like a 30 centimeter right okay so i am um, I, I like a 30 centimeter um for my sleeves and then i'll go down to a 20 centimeter for the cuff you see so anyway i logged in and, and that um that cardigan actually needs a 3.5 um needle you see i didn't have one i really thought i did though i've been through everywhere anyway so i actually like addies i love addy needles because they're round and they um don't actually put a hole in my finger if i'm doing pattern socks for instance i will go up and use my chargoos because they're a little bit more pointy and but then i have to put a cover up this finger because i get a hole but when it comes to needles normally it's my addies because the the connection from the needle to the cable there is no ridge there's nothing it just flows so anyway i actually thought well i always get my normally get my needles my addy needles from the wool stack and um as you see i did actually get the uh, 30 centimeter 3.5 now i've ordered practically all my addies from these i think if um over the uh, the time the ones that i've needed and i will say that what are we on today with thursday i ordered these tuesday morning and they came yesterday even with all this trouble that's going on at the moment they do come very quickly so definitely go over and have a look at wall stack they are brilliant when it comes to their service and um yeah i will um definitely recommend them right then i think we're finally finished <laughs> so hopefully this is probably not going to be too long i reckon it is but i'm oh, sorry and uh yeah i'm gonna go downstairs and uh put my feet up now <laughs> i don't feel well at all so um yeah okay then so i'm gonna say goodbye and everybody you know have a lovely a lovely lovely time if you're crafting and stay safe take care happy crafting bye